25 years ago, you played a concert in front of the entire world. One month ago, you played in Barso, California for 40 people, most of whom were there for $2 taco night. Bill and Ted, what have you got to say for yourselves? Be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. You were supposed to unite the world and save reality as we know it. Bill, we've spent our whole life trying to write the song that will unite the world. Why can't we just go to the future when we have written it? Whoa! Take it from ourselves! But isn't that stealing? How is that stealing if we're stealing it from ourselves, dude? <laughs> How'd you like our song? It's a little on the dark side, but you know, that's cool. Hi, I'm Alex Winter. Hi, I'm Keanu Reeves. And together we are... Wild Stallions. And we know it's a tough time right now and that you're having to do this virtual graduation. Ugh. We want to wish you the best of luck moving forward. Yeah, congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. Well done. San Dimas High School football does roll. Rules! <laughs> but most importantly, we wanted to tell you to be excellent to each other. And party on. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie, Party On. This is going to be my Bill and Ted 3 trailer video. If you guys didn't know, they made a sequel to the Bill and Ted movies. It's Bill and Ted Face the Music. So we'll break it down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We'll do an Amazon giveaway. I'll explain what's going on with the release, too, because there's no release date in the trailer, but right now it's listed for an August release. So I think that they're just trying to figure out when they're going to drop it. They're bringing back a ton of stuff from the first two films. Don't worry if you haven't seen any of the Bill and Ted films. You just see Keanu Reeves and you're like, what kind of John Wick prequel is this? What's going on here? They even did a special graduation video for San Dimas High School in California. That's the high school that they attended in the movies. So they were doing it for the high school in real life. Because of the virus right now, most people are having to do virtual online graduation ceremonies. So this is them just doing something nice for them in real life. But there are a couple moments in the trailer where they chart the timeline to explain what's happened so far and what's going on to create the problems that they have to solve for this movie. So if you've never seen a Bill and Ted film, it's Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter, Bill S. Preston Esquire, and Ted Theodore Logan. This is some old school Keanu Reeves going back to 89 for the first film and then 1991 for the second film. They even did a TV series for Bill and Ted. They came back and did the voices for the animated series for just the first season, but I think they did two seasons of that. The title of the movie is Bill and Ted Face the Music because it's Bill and Ted facing reality coming to grips with middle age. They're facing the music that they were supposed to create to unite the world but haven't done yet. And they're also metaphorically facing the music as in dying again briefly, seemingly because they brought death back the character from Bill and Ted's bogus journey played by William Sadler. He's been in a billion movies and TV shows usually playing villain characters so you probably recognize him from somewhere. But the trailer begins with them in the future again in this utopia facing the council because they haven't written the song that's supposed to save the world yet. Remember, they kept hyping that up in the first two films. You'll create this wonderful music that creates this utopia. You bring the world together. Usually that's George Carlin's character Rufus that would tell them that. But because he passed away in real life, they said that they're not going to recast the character for this movie. So there's no Rufus in this movie except in archival footage. So there will be some actual Rufus going on, but it's stuff that they filmed a long time ago. The big problem in this movie, because they haven't created that special music yet, is that the future is threatened, the world is threatened, but it's also the universe as well. So they literally have to save the universe by creating this special music. When this council member says 25 years ago you played a concert for the world, that's the events of Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, the second movie. That was the one where they fought the evil Bill and Ted robots from the future and also time traveled so they could spend 16 months getting guitar lessons and becoming good guitar players. Because the whole joke of the first two movies was that they create this amazing music in the future, but in present day of the 80s and the early 90s, they're terrible musicians. 
even the princesses that they steal from medieval England and bring back to present day become better musicians than they do on the fly. In the background of the freeway here in the trailer, you can see people looking like they're just appearing out of nowhere, Terminator style, like they can't control the timeline as it's breaking down. The rules of time travel in the Bill and Ted universe are not like Avengers Endgame. They don't create branch realities when they change stuff in the past. They just change their own one timeline, past, present, and future. They recite their signature catchphrase, party on, be excellent to each other. We get our first shot of the signature phone booth. Usually another big trope of the Bill and Ted movies is that they're given this special time travel device, the phone booth, but they usually use it wrong and wind up breaking it at some point during the movies and then have to fix it. So things go completely crazy, as you can see during the trailer. As I said, they brought back William Sadler as death. This is them in hell visiting him, as you can see the molten fiery landscape behind them. They died briefly during Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, the second film, and that's how they met Death that time. Maybe they also died during this movie for a hot minute, and that's how they wind up back talking to him again. The reason why they befriend Death in the second film is that in order to make it back to the world of the living, they had to defeat Death in a game of their choosing, so they challenged him to a game of Twister and Battleship and won, so Death was forced to become their servant for a little while. For some reason, they're super ripped and swole in prison here with tats and everything. These are probably the versions of themselves that they run into in the future when they say that they're going to try and steal the song from themselves in the future. Like something terrible happens to them in the future and they wind up in prison at some point. They didn't say who the main villain of the movie is this time, but it feels kind of like the first film where Ted's father was kind of the antagonist, but not really the villain, because he was threatening to send him to military school if he didn't graduate from high school. And in order to do that, he had to pass the history exam, which is the reason for all of their time travel in the first film. They kind of imply in this trailer that they create a lot of these problems for themselves, so they might wind up being the antagonists of their own film just by botching time travel and not doing the things that they're supposed to do. They said in the movie that during the present day of 2020, when this is all taking place, they are circling the drain metaphorically. Both their lives are kind of falling apart. Their marriages aren't doing so hot to the princesses. Their daughters hate them, which you actually see during the trailer. So not only are they trying to save the future and the universe, they're also trying to save their families from falling apart, their lives from falling apart in present day. If you haven't seen the first two Bill and Ted films, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, they're cult classics. They made the first film on a budget of six and a half million dollars. So that explains why they use some of the twists the way that they do. If you're wondering why it looks the way that it does. So quick rundown of the first two films if it's been a while since you've seen them. The first movie is them trying to save the future because Keanu Reeves, Ted character, might not pass history and could get sent to military school and thus they never become the wild stallions of the future creating the special music to bring the world together creating the utopia. They travel through history collecting a bunch of historical figures to do this history report for them and that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple plot. Along the way they meet two princesses while they're in medieval England and take them with them to the future to become their wives. The whole thing with the second movie, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, is them also saving the future in a bigger way because an evil ex-gym teacher from the future, that's right, evil ex-gym teacher, hates the peaceful future that they help create because apparently gym teachers do not exist in the future anymore. So he basically took their jobs. Everybody post your South Park memes. They took our gym! They took your gym! They took your gym! So he creates two evil Bill and Ted robots to go back into the past and ruin their lives so they lose the Battle of the Bands referenced during this trailer at the beginning when she says 25 years ago you played for the world. The robots wind up killing them during the film. That's how they wind up in hell meeting and befriending death and then they make it back and the way they defeat the villain at the end of that film is through a lot of complex time travel logic and trickery mostly talking him into being defeated. Then because they still have to win the Battle of the Bands, but they're terrible at guitar, they time travel with their wives for 16 months getting guitar lessons so that they can get good, come back, and actually win the contest. And then the end credit scene is basically a montage of their futures and a bunch of headlines of all the great things that they were supposed to do and eventually wind up doing. So I'm assuming that this movie is all taking place before those headlines. I've been watching so much Keanu Reeves in John Wick and thinking about him in Marvel movies lately that it's been a while since I've seen him in a comedy. It's been a while since I've seen those first two films. So everyone just post all your reactions to this film. Let me know, have you seen the first two films or is this your very first Bill and Ted film? 
What will happen is, is it sounds like they're planning on releasing the movie sometime towards the end of the summer initially. That might change a little bit just because everyone's trying to figure out movie release schedules for the second half of the year. Right now, the first really, really big movie that's supposed to be released in theaters is Christopher Nolan's Tenant in July. If that actually winds up happening, then we'll probably see this movie sometime in August. Right now, because of the virus and the way people are lifting the quarantine slowly, movie theaters are just barely starting to reopen. So it's a week by week kind of thing. Like just play it by ear to see how things go by the time we get to July and August. There was also some big Batman and Joker news recently. So I'll do a video for that next. That video should post in a little while. While you wait for everything, click here for my brand new Marvel Eternals first look video and click here for my brand new Spider-Man 3 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone party on, be excellent to each other. I'll see you guys tonight. Is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking.